Pouze ou, qui moun, qui qui moun, citoyen qui vivent dans la communauté a ou de passage. Entrepreneurs, professionnels, politiciens, entertainers, qui est-ce qui a aidé la communauté à avancer? Qui est-ce qui a fait le feedback? Hello everyone, once again, welcome. You are watching Who's Who, Ki Moon, Ki Ki Moon, when we say it in Creole. My name is Kelik Francois. As you already know, we're on a mission. Our mission is to seek and to find who's doing what in the community to empower the community. Well, a new show, and definitely we have a new special guest. I'm sure you don't want to miss who we will be speaking with next. So please sit back, relax. We're taking a quick pause, and we will be right back. Hello everyone, welcome to Family Dentistry, Super Smile. We love helping people, we accept most insurances. Hello, no pa mwen se Rachel, mwen se yon assistant Dr. Klein. Job pa mwen se pou mede ou mem patient, lo vin fe kelke swa travay nan ofis la pou nou mete ou konfortab. Ou tan de komon nou mem nou kapa pede ou. So si se yon moun ki gen mouvez alen, jan siv lan ap senyen, ou bien nan sufas dan li chanje koule, Rele nou nou 954-748-4860. 954-748-4860. So let us help you replace any missing teeth. If you have the desire, we will find a way for you to have a healthy smile. Who's who? Ki moun, ki ki moun. Citoyen kap viv nan komunote a ou de pasaj. Entrepreneur. Professionnel, politicien, entertainer, qui est-ce qui a aidé la communauté à avancer? Qui est-ce qui a fait le feedback? Hey, welcome back, everybody. Don't forget you are watching Who's Who, Ki Moon, Ki Ki Moon. Just like I promised you, we have a new special guest. And without any delay, we would like to welcome to our show, Miss Elena. How you doing? How you doing? It's a pleasure having you on the show. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Who's Who. Thank you. So, well, who's who? Kimun Kikimun, this is the name of the show. So it speaks for itself, yes, as you yes. can tell, right? Yes. So you already know what I'm about, what, what I'm about to ask you, right? Yes. Okay, we, I would like for you to tell me, tell the viewer who you are. Tell us every little piece of information that we might, kn we might need to know if we meet you on the street so we <laughs> feel like we already know you, you're like family to us. Okay. Um, like I said, my name is Elena. Um, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. And um, I went to a little known fact about me. I went to Whitney Young Magnet High School. Okay. Uh, it's the same high school that the first lady, Michelle Obama, went to. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, yes. See, actually, uh, Michelle Obama lived probably about two, four or five miles from where we were growing up at. You used to know her? You no, I didn't no? know her. No, oh, okay. she was like a few years before I went to school. But once, um, actually, um, the president and the first lady went into office, we got a big note from the Whitney Young that, you know, our our, one of our own is, you know, in the White House. So right. that was great. Okay. Um, after I was, um, after I went to high school, I went to the University of Illinois, and I got my bachelor's degree in advertising. Wow. And um, I didn't really know what I was going to do afterwards, and so I moved to Austin, Texas, and I worked for a cable company in okay. Austin, and I was a marketing representative for oh. about. About a year and a half. A year and a half, okay. And I decided, um, the person I was with at the time, um, I was trying to decide whether to get an MBA mm -hmm. or to, to do something else. And his parents were telling me that, you know, I always loved libraries. Right. I did. I always loved libraries. But I didn't see a career path. So, but they were like directors. They were pretty high up in the... Um, they were executive directors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they said that the, there was a, you know, a bigger career path for you. And right. so you really should think about becoming a librarian. And, I'm, and I wasn't <laughs> like enamored with it. Okay. But I said, you know, the degree was only a year. Mm -hmm. I could try it. And if I didn't like it, I can just go back and get that MBA. Yeah, you can always do something else. So I decided to go back. So I went back to Chicago, where I'm from. And I got my degree, and um, I've been a librarian ever since. It's been um, 14 years. 14 years. Yes. So it seems like you enjoy what you do. I, I was really surprised. I was <laughs> really surprised. But they were really right that 
little known fact about libraries, which people always think it's boring and right. reading and things like that. Quiet. Quiet. Mm -hmm. But what I found is, is that there's so many different things that you can get into librarianship. For me, who's easily bored, can like go and do a variety of different things. And right. so within my career, I was able to like work at a university. Mm -hmm. I was able to work for the federal government. I was able to um, work for a big corporation. Now I work for a big public library. It's right. just, you can do a variety of different things. Yeah, so most definitely. Originally, you came from? Chicago. Chicago. All right. So that's, why, that's, that's the reason why you, you went to the same school with yes, uh, yes. The, the first president. Uh, yeah. I mean, first lady. First lady. Yes. Lady, right. And uh, after that, from, from Chicago, then you moved to? Austin, what? Texas. Austin, Texas. Yes. And you, and it, how, for how many years? About a year and a half. A year and a half. Then I went back to Illinois. Okay. Got my degree. And then I went to um, Tucson, Arizona. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's like you were on a world tour, <laughs> on a state much. tour. That's great. Yes, this I is, was in Tucson, This Arizona. is wonderful. I was in the desert. All right, so how do you like it in South Florida? Very different. You know, I, it's very, every place that I've ever moved to has a different flavor. And, um, you know, I was always here in South Florida as a tourist. Okay. You know, we would come and we would head straight to, um, um, the beach, mm -hmm. you know, we would just get off the plane and hit beeline to the beach. <laughs> and I remember when somebody told me at one time that we were like, what, what's going on with this Fort Lauderdale area? And they said, oh, go to the Galleria Mall. They took it to the Galleria Mall. They were like, here it is. And yep. So all we knew for years mm -hmm. is that beach, Galleria Mall. So when I actually moved here, you know, my mother was like, well, what else is going on there? I was like, there's a lot going on. You just <laughs> never outside of the beach and the mall, you know. But yeah. I have, you know, we had been here several times, but so, I had never known, you know, how big it was, how big Broward County exactly. is. Exactly. So would you say everybody from the other states underestimated Floridians? Yes, yes. And big Broward time. County, I mean, I think people just see it as Fort Lauderdale. When I tell them the county has almost three million people, yes. people are shocked. They were like, really? I said, it's big. Yeah, you have people it's from big. all over, yeah. all over the world. All over the world. Tell us about you so we get to know you. Yeah, there's a lot of things. When I, mm -hmm. when I went to Tucson, Arizona, I worked at a university. And so the first job out of library uh, ship was uh, I was a um, researcher. Okay. So a little, another little known fact about me is I've written two books. Wow. I yes. didn't know about that. Yes, no, I'm an author. That's why you're on Who's Who. That's why we would like to know that. <laughs> no wonder you become a librarian. <laughs> I was, well, See? it was by happenstance. Um, a, 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 Sort of sad story, but good story. When mm -hmm. I first got there, um, the librarians, um, it was a, what's it called, uh, publisher parish. Okay. Meaning that if you didn't do a certain amount of uh, writing and presenting and things like that, you were going to be fired. Right, right. It was publisher parish. And the librarians, the older librarians, didn't want to work with me. Oh, wow. And so I found out that for a lot of people of color, they didn't really work, weren't working with them. Yes. And a lot of the people of color were not... Um, uh, making it mm -hmm. because the people wouldn't want to work with them. They didn't have the ends, you know, the networking. Right, they didn't right, have right. all the things they needed to mm -hmm, do. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do, you know, you, those are times where you have to take the risk. Right. You have to take the risk. Mm -hmm. So I got together with all the other people of color who couldn't, who couldn't figure out uh, how to navigate. And since I had a marketing background, right. I was able to write proposals and get us presented places. Okay. And when we would present places, people would say, you know, we would like for you to write an article. Right. Could you write an article about what you just presented? And that's how we got our foot in the door. Oh, wow. And one of the places that we presented at was the was first time that a person of color had ever presented at that place. First time ever. First time And that ever. was you? Yes. It oh, was my like, God. It was so I'm sitting with a legend. No, no. It was funny no? <laughs> because... Um, uh, we were talking about human-computer interaction. Okay. And they never expect people to color to be talking about human-computer interaction, right? Right. And so we come in and, you know, I'm tall. And then the other lady was taller than me and oh. she had locks all the way down to her ankles. Wow. And the other person had <laughs> a red afro. And we come in and people are like, what in the world <laughs> is going on? Right. And so... We were like, and there was 300 people in the room. And I told, I told the other ladies, I was like, we're gonna have to bring it because they just do not expect us to be here. And afterwards, we got a standing ovation. And um, 
they asked us to present in London and other places like that because mm -hmm. we were so well received. Okay. But one of the really positive things that happened is that there was a publisher in the audience who said, I really l enjoyed your material and I would love for you guys to write a book about it. Ah, that's so amazing. that's how that's how we end up getting the first that's book. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, somebody the first approached us. woman of color. Yeah. I I'm, I'm loving this. This yeah, is great. Yeah, this is great. This is really great. Oh, wow. Well, we're, we're about to take a quick pause. All right. And when we come back, we will definitely talk about this wonderful edifice that we're sitting in, yes. which is an African-American research library. Mm -hmm. It's not just a plain library, but no, it's a it's research not. library. No, it's not. You get back to your roots and you know where you came from because you never know where you're going unless you know where you came from. OK, for the love of you that don't understand English, I'm with Ms. Elena Norland. Uh, I'm a librarian and I'm a librarian African American Research Library. La ate an assistant. Come and visit it. Mali comment te commencer. Comment le faire venir ici? Elle sorti juste Illinois. Il passe tout côté au venir là en Florida qu'on y a là. Les nous retourner on va parler de library ça qui chita an assistant là. Thank you very much for watching. Who's who? Kimon ki Kimon we sitting here with Miss Elena Norland. And you already she already gave you the introduction. We're taking quick pause. Please sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. Don't touch that remote now. Who's who? Kimoun ki Kimoun. Citoyen ka viv nan komunote a ou de pasaj. Entrepreneur, professionnel, politicien, entertainer. Ki es kap ede komunote a avanse? Ki es kap fel fe bak? Hey, welcome back. Don't forget, you are watching Who's Who? Kimoun ki Kimoun. This is Killick Francois. I'm sitting here with Miss Elaine Norland. She already introduced herself. And for those of you who missed the first part, we're talking about how she got, how she became the executive director, uh, how, she, how she became a librarian. And also she's a writer. She came out with two books already. And she was the first woman of color to represent uh, this whole, um, writing, you know, being an author and everything. So um, we thank you so much for sitting there and still watching us. Um, uh, let's get back to Miss Elaine Norland. Um, how you doing? You still doing good, right? <laughs> still good. All right, thank you for still sitting here with us. Yes. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience sitting with a librarian. I thought you guys were uh, quiet all the time, <laughs> but you were not. So um, tell us, how did you become the executive director of this library? Um, interesting enough, I, after I left Arizona, mm -hmm. I w went to Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., I worked for the federal government and I um, was a program officer, a grant program officer, and right. I uh, gave money out for libraries and museums for money, just money for them to, okay. for programming. Okay. And so... I became, a lot of people end up knowing me because I was the money girl. Okay, so when, when you talk, when you say giving money, you're giving it as uh, sponsoring the library or? Uh, no, um, actually the, what the federal government does, they get money from, you know, the Congress. Okay. And they have what's called discretionary funds, like um, Department of Education or NEA or any of those places, they get money from Congress. We had about $20 million at our disposal. Oh, okay. People would write grants in and we would, um, there was a formal process for oh, them to get money. Okay. And I was sort of the liaison, the person that you would call and talk to in order to talk about your grant ideas and, you know, um, and then once you got awarded the money, I was the person who you talked to as you spent your money. Oh, basically. okay. That's, that's right. So a lot of people end up knowing me just mm -hmm. because I was the money girl right. for working for the federal government. And I also left, um, I had tenure at the University of Arizona and I could have stayed there for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But I decided to take a risk. Yeah. I decided like, I'm gonna do something different. So, Gotta take a risk. So I time. moved to DC, you know, <laughs> and I didn't know anybody, but I moved there. And I worked for the federal government for a while. And then I also worked for a very high profile uh, corporation within libraries. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked there for a few years too. Okay. So long story short, um, what 
this library was looking for. Uh, we have an assistant director who does the day-to-day -day operations. She manages the staff and stuff, but they were looking for somebody who knew about national visibility, mm -hmm. and they also wanted to have someone who had a bigger picture vision uh, to help move this place forward. Right. So when they asked me to come interview, that was c the skill sets that they were looking for. And so I was a little hesitant because I had never necessarily worked for a public library before. That's but they were like, we're looking for a risk taker, we're looking for someone who, who knows people out, you know, nationwide and right. stuff like that, which I did. I was lucky, I've was very, been very fortunate to have met a lot of people oh, you know, in my great. career. Yeah. That's great. Um, and yeah, and I've been, I was, I've presented different places. I was actually a keynote in Jamaica oh, wow. and a variety of places. And so they also were looking for how we can make ties with the Caribbean. And so since I had, you know, been to the Virgin Islands and different places presenting, mm -hmm. that that was, uh, you know, in my favor too. That's great. So yeah. becoming a librarian, well, especially the executive director, it's not like you just sit in a library. But no. you also get to travel. You <laughs> well, went to Jamaica. I have. I've been very fortunate. fortunate. I've been very blessed. Um, the book that, the original book that I wrote was an international book. It was, mm -hmm. and it was picked up all over the world. So okay. I went to London. I've been to Paris. I was in Australia. Um, and of Spain. Um, yeah, and then I was in Jamaica. I've been to a variety of different places. Just like I said, a world yeah. tour. Yeah, it's, no, it was great. It's so just as far very, as those, very fortunate. As far as those books, where can one, where can someone Amazon. find those books? Amazon.com. Just Amazon. type a later in the Yeah, you, you will find it. Well, so you yeah. wouldn't be able to get a book in this library. They have it. They my have it book upstairs. is special collections. Oh, special collections. Yeah, they ah, have it. that big. <laughs> no. <They're> huge. <laughs> so, uh, Elena, how... What does it take to become uh, an executive um, director of a library? I didn't know when I started, but <laughs> what I could say now, it really does take a big picture. You have to, I mean, there's so much of the library that's the day-to-day. -day. It's the you know opening and the making sure everything is running smoothly, mm -hmm. the day-to-day. -day. That has to go on. But the executive director really has to kind of know where you want to go and not get distracted by all the day-to-day -day distractions. Right. You know, you still have to sort of like, you know, which is really great. I have a great assistant, and that's another thing you want. You always want somebody who's your backup, who can do the things that you're not being able to do. Somebody you know really, really well. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know my assistant very oh, well okay. at all, but <laughs> I was, I've, I've been, you know, I've been very blessed. Okay. And my assistant is very good at the running of the day-to-day, -day, which helps me focus in on what, what do we need to do to move forward? Mm -hmm. What do we need to do to move forward? So that's, that's been really good. But keeping, not getting distracted and being able to, to take small risks, because I work for the county, so I can't right. take big risks. Yeah, exactly. But I can take, you know, step. I have to take, you know, but still I'm able to, you know, inch us a little fur further, mm -hmm. just push us a little bit more, which is good. That's good. And that's what you have to do. That's nice. Why is this strong? Why they build Oh, sure. The library in Sistra. Um, well, the story, I'm, I've only been here two years, okay. but the place opened up in October 2002. Um, the, the person who was the county director over all of the, the libraries, um, he's retired now, but before, he had went to the Schomburg in New York City. Okay. And he was so amazed by the combination of a research facility a cultural center and a public library, because that's kind of how the Schomburg is, is, mm -hmm. is in New York, mm -hmm. that he wanted to bring that to the community. Okay. He was determined to bring it to the community. And he wanted it right in the heart of the African-American, African-Caribbeans. He wanted it where we were. Okay, that's So great. he spent literally almost seven years seven. raising money wow. for it. It, it, was, it didn't happen like this, right. literally. Uh, the community got together and did fundraising for years, years before the place opened up. And because the county only gave them a certain amount of money, he had to raise over $7 million. $7 million. Wow. So, and he was able to do that. And it was his vision to, to have something of a source of pride that was just like the Schomburg or Auburn Avenue in Atlanta, mm -hmm. okay. where it would just be somewhere that would have a national recognition and bring national recognition to South to Florida. South Florida. Yeah. So is this the only library they have or they have many 
Only Nine three rare. in the country. Three of them. So where are they located? One's in New York City, the Schaumburg. Okay. And the other one's Auburn Avenue in um, Atlanta. I'm sorry, there's another one in Denver. And so they have four, four all together. Four in the whole right. country. In the whole country. In the whole country. Wow, this is great. Yes. And we have one, unfortunately right. enough, in, they have in one South Florida. in South Florida. Yes. And it is in Cistron. I don't know if you heard about this, I mean, Cistron history. Yes. Drug dealer. <laughs> prostitution <laughs> and all that about yes, the change yes. as you already know I mean we're working on a project we want we will not unveil our project yet but people will see and it, it will be right here in Sis Trunk I'm sure Sis Trunk will be big I don't know if you are familiar with this quote the first will become the last and the last will become the the first yes. you familiar with that yes this is exactly what's going no, on no I here. think it's really great I think you know, I, I came here right in the time where they now are starting to, you know, change this trunk and it's the new, it's getting a new energy and, mm -hmm. and it's great. And we're like right at the end of this trunk. So we were almost sort of like at the very end of all the development, oh, which wow. I think is great. I great. just, uh, when I first walked in as somebody from not from here mm -hmm. and I looked at the facility, I'm like, it's my gosh, this is a beautiful place. I took a tour the other day. It's beautiful. My God, it was mind blowing. And I was and like, I love oh, it. I'm like, and a lot of none of people know about it. So right. I'm like, this is a gorgeous. Facility. That's why we have it on Who's Who. We would like to expose <laughs> it and let people know. Take your kids, take them back, take them back, way back, so they know exactly what's going on. You know what? Let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we talk about the needs of the library. Not sure. because it's beautiful, it, that doesn't mean it doesn't have needs, right? right? We need money, we still need money. Seven million wasn't enough. Right. Um, you're watching Who's Who, Kimun Ki Kimun, Tutmun Kabgare Konyano, still shit avec Miss Elena Norland, the non library, African American research library, qui la shit an assist drunk. Make sure you know that you can't have any history, you can't have any history. Once again, if you don't know where you came from, you will not know. Where are you going? Uh, you're watching Who's Who, Kimun Ki Kimun. We're taking a quick pause. Stay there, and we'll be right back. You talk to a Fort Lauderdale. 701 Nordiste 13e Street, téléphone 954 760 41 42, Virgil Toxido à Miami, 9210 Nordiste 2e Avenue, téléphone 305 757 48 22, à Virgil Toxido, courtoisie, bon service, meilleur choix. Once again, welcome back. Don't forget you're watching Who's Who, Kimun, Kikimun, when we say it in Creole, we're still here at the African American. Research Library, which is located here in Sistron. We're still sitting here with, with Miss Nolan, and uh, you already know she introduced herself and she talked about how she became an executive director of the library. I mean, you were sitting there, you know the whole story. Right? Give us a little bit of information about this wonderful, beautiful library, which is located what they used to call the ghetto. It's no longer a ghetto. I've seen a whole right. lot of nice building. Right. And also we met Isaiah Sistron. Yes. And his great grandpa built this city because he was like the first black doctor. Yes. And they wouldn't let him practice in the hospital with the mm -hmm. Caucasian. Right. So he had to create his own. He had the Providence Hospital. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we met his grandson. It was a wonderful idea. I mean, we're sitting with history. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about this wonderful library. The thing that you should know about the library is, is, is what we said, it's a combination of a cultural center, which is downstairs here. Okay. And we also, upstairs, we have a special collections. That's where our research is, upstairs. We have a vault full of information from, uh, from all over Africa. We have Afro-Caribbean um, materials, and we have other like um, people like um, um, Esther Roll, mm -hmm. who is from Pompano Beach, right. you know, when she was in Good Time. Right. Yes, and that Florida, was, yeah, for Florida, everybody yes, I know Flo Esther. Yes, Florida. Yes, <laughs> so she was right. She was a Bahamian, okay. and she was from Pompano Beach. And I didn't have, even know that. Yes. I thought she was Floridian. Yeah, she's so she's actually from the Bahamas. Yes, she's from, she's Bahamian. My God. Yes. It's, it's not because I came from the island. <laughs> I'm saying the best came from the island. <laughs> No, I'm no, not trying anybody. No, no. I didn't know that. Yes, That's a great piece facts. of information. Yes, yes. Okay. And ahead. we also have some of the unpublished manuscripts from Alex Haley. And we're, um, right now we're doing a really bigger push because we want to collect the history 
of our people here in the community. And that's what our push is for now. Because uh, one of the goals of the uh, former director who this was his vision, mm -hmm. is to make sure that we preserve everyone's history right. for future generations. And we have a vault and right. we have the materials and we can digitize and we can make sure that when your children and grandchildren yes. come in, they can see what was going on. Exactly. And so anything that was happening here, we've been encouraging people, we want to preserve it. Right. We want to make sure we're preserving your materials. But if you want to come in and actually sample whatever that's in our research, we have that upstairs in our special collections. Okay. We also have a, just a standard public library with computers and books and all of the various things as a regular public library would be. So. We are, you know, it's a unique combination. Right over here, mm -hmm. we have a 300-seat auditorium, which we, is open to the public. I okay. mean, if you have a not-for-profit status, you could actually book our auditorium oh, wow. and have events, and we have concerts and fashion shows and all kinds of things. Uh -huh. and we're always encouraging, it's, it's for the community. Right, right. So we're always encouraging people to come in with their ideas, with their concerts, with whatever. We have the auditorium. It's, this auditorium can hold up to what? 300 people. 300 people. Mm -hmm. All right, and on the other side, to my left, mm -hmm. we have, what, what's really going on in there? I mean, I saw the car, <laughs> the motorcycle. What, what's, what's going on? The library uh, was opened October 26, 2002. We will be 10 years old next year, October 26, 2012. Wow. So what we decided to do is to have a year-long celebration. So it started in October, and the gallery is going to be transformed into a street scene from the 1940s. The reason we decided on the 1940s is because during Sistrunk in this area here uh -huh. was limited by segregation. Uh, so uh, what happened was is that since there was segregation, people of color were able, they owned their own businesses and stuff like that because they couldn't go anywhere else. Just like what you said right. with Providence Hospital, they, exactly. they ended up doing their own because they had to. Right. And so a lot of that history is lost. You know, all of those buildings were um, torn down. Mm -hmm. A lot of the elders had had some photos, some right. didn't. Mm -hmm. So we took everything that we had in our special collections, artifacts that we got, and we are providing that for people to see what it was like in the 40s and what contributions that black Fort Lauderdale have mm -hmm. during that time. Right. And we're also encouraging people to come in as they see our exhibit and if they have any artifacts, if they have said, so, you know what, we have something right. that we want to preserve, then that's where we're, this is our your time to bring it in and preserve it or even have it in our gallery. Oh, wow. So it's, okay. it's not only to entertain and showcase um, our accomplishments, but it's also a chance for us to continue to preserve our history. Right. It's also, very important and, and, for us and, to do that. And it will definitely educate the people. Yes, Because exactly. we need to know that. Yes. All right. There's another one behind me. What's the name <laughs> of this room right there? That's called the Harambe Room. Why is it so echoey? Because um, we wanted something that was exciting for the kids. Um, oh. They wanted to not only, you know, educate about the history, um, information about um, Sistrunk is there, mm -hmm. my Zells are there, but also they wanted the kids to have fun. Right. So they did a, sort of an echo chamber so as kids could go in and they say the lift every voice and sing or they sing songs and it's very, it's just a great place for children. It, it is. And, and when we have tours, people come through there all the time. You know, we're moving towards technology. And so we're always in sort of a fundraising mode to um, upgrade our, our facility to mm -hmm. be more, uh, you know, with the 21st century. Right. So we are always looking for opportunities to add in more software mm -hmm. and more technology to bring that added dimension to uh, educate our children. Okay. And That's so great. we're always looking for avenues or partnerships. We're open to that too. So I would really highly suggest to come in. Um, and you know, work with us to see what we can do mm -hmm. to you know work together. Yeah, to empower yes. our people. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure Thank meeting you. Very you. Much. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience meeting you. So, is there any? Because before we leave, we always leave a positive message, especially for the young people that are watching. If you have any positive message, please, this is the time to speak to them face to face. I would say a lot of times. Um, People always ask me when they hear about different things that I've done, you know, how I was able to do it. And, um, and when kids come and when I tell them that I gave a talk to a thousand people somewhere, how were you able to do it? Mm -hmm. And I would always encourage people that 
a lot of things I did was because I, I took the risk. And I knew, and a lot of times it didn't work out. Right. We almost have to realize it's not gonna work out 100% all the time. But if we keep trying and just say, you know, what, what is the worst that could happen is someone says no. And really keep pushing and then positive energy saying that it's all gonna work out. Right. And you know, if the door closed, another door will open then that's usually how things have happened for me. Sort of like, if I've had more doors, more no's, no, we're never gonna do it, than you can ever imagine. I don't know how many times I've been rejected. Right. But the door, I found out later, the door was closed for a reason. Right. Later on, I mean, as I get older, I'm like, now that I get a no, I'm like, that means that the yes is gonna be even better. And I want us as the people of color to realize that we should take risk. And it, it might not always work out right. But it's all going to, if we keep the positive energy, it all work out for the good. That's it? Yes. Well said. Yes. Thank you very much You're for welcome. your time, You're for welcome. sitting down with us. You're watching Who's Who, Kimun Kikil Kimun. I'm Kelly Francois, as you already know. We're sitting here with Ms. Nolan, Elena Nolan, the executive director of this wonderful edifice. There's only one in South Florida, just to let you know, only one. So make sure you bring your kid in and so take them back and teach them who they used to be who they are right now so we can empower our young people. Not for just the young people, but the older people also. Now got a who's who, Kimun Ki Kimun. Nous sommes avec Ms. Nolan, Elena Nolan, c'est lui-même qui est executive director pour librairie ça, qui n'a si strong. Tout le monde qui a gardé là, son place, nous tout à ce poser, mais n'est-ce qu'il y a une nouvelle chose à faire. Un bon show qui a pris l'ouvrir là, qui a montré 40, 1940, comme on va y être à marcher dans ce strong plan. Déjà, on a ce strong son mauvais place lié. So, m'invitez nous tout venir, venir checker, come check out your history. Once again, this is Who's Who, Kimun Kikimun. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, everybody.